parts of the model that are, are wrong uh, will, will ultimately prevail. Now let's see, we've got a question here from uh, Matt. Uh, what type of automation is Rex referring to if not GUI automation? Our dev team is in charge of the uh, unit testing. Yeah, okay, good question, Matt. Um, I'm not saying don't do GUI automation if that's the route that you've decided to go. Um, the thing to remember is that the graphical user interface on at least certain parts of the graphical user interface are, are often going to be the, 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 the thing that changes. Um, you know, that this is a, a big uh, emphasis of the, uh, of the, you know, this embracing change. And so you have to be very careful when you're creating your, main, your, your um, testing frameworks to make sure they're maintainable. There's a lot of, uh, I think, good advice available out there in books and, and training courses on how to create maintainable graphical user interface tests. And so, you know, if you have to do that, then by all means do that. If you can automate at the command line, if there's a command line available of some sort or another, then uh, that certainly is likely to be a lot more uh, maintainable, or at least it's going it ch to, when it changes, it changes in a way that doesn't undermine the test as much. Let's, let's put it that way. So if you can do command line interface automation, I'd say take a look at that as something to do either in addition to or instead of uh, GUI. Uh, let's see. Uh, question. Uh, can all attendees see my questions or just the moderators? Uh, just the moderators. Um, and I can see your question here, Andrew. Um, but I don't know what, other than the question about the question, I don't know what the question is. So uh, let's see. And another uh, question from Keith. Uh, can you explain what you mean by independent tester and sprint silos? OK, that's a good, those are good questions, Keith. When I say independent tester, I'm talking about somebody who reports into an organization that is not, um, not immediately part of the project team. Um, that they are there, uh, their, their, their mission and uh, role is to find defects, to manage risk, to build confidence, to uh, assess and report on the level of quality in, in, a, in a way, a setting in the organization that does not create any sort of uh, incentive problems for them. And, and typically the way that that's solved is by putting the testers in a, in a separate team that reports into a level of management that's sufficiently senior to um, avoid the sort of, of crosstalk that, that can occur. When I say crosstalk, I mean in the sense that uh, their, their defined mission, which, which might not be written down, but which they, they maybe have defined for themselves, their defined mission and, and what their immediate manager is uh, rewarded or and or punished for doing are not aligned such that the people the person managing the test manager or, or the indeed the test manager herself or himself might be in a conflicted uh, incentive situation which then would reduce uh, independence now in terms of sprint silos what I mean by a sprint silo is that it, hopefully you, you, all of you are familiar with the concept of siloing or the, the phrase siloing where where people are working off in this group on some inward focused kind of project or effort and they lose track of how that relates to the broader organizational world in which they find themselves. And so what I meant by sprint silos is that, that we've seen situations where in our organizations, client organizations that have organized sprints, uh, organized uh, agile methodologies, excuse me, as, as sprints, that each sprint is off doing its own thing and they're not necessarily communicating very effectively with, with each other. There's a uh, limited amount of uh, structure for that. Now, in some cases, that's dealt with by um, uh, what, what some of our clients refer to as the scrum of scrums, if they're doing scrum, where the various participants in the different sprints get together and uh, have these uh, sort of cross-functional, uh, cross-sprint discussions. Uh, and and that, that, that does help, but of course then that, that can create the possibility of uh, the meeting um, expansion. So 
you know you have to balance that of uh, how much how much time do we want to spend trying to to uh, cut down uh, cut through the silo walls if you will uh, versus um, remaining effective and efficient and you know the small team oriented uh, focus of the agile methodologies is uh, is sort of an exacerbating factor here. Next question is from Jeff. Jeff asks, can Rex elaborate on what reactive testing is? Yeah, good question, Jeff. So reactive testing is a term that I use to encompass all forms of testing where we are primarily going to react to the system as it is presented to us rather than try to um, do a lot of analysis and upfront development design of tests and so forth. Uh, so James Whitaker's book, How to Break Software, includes a number of what he calls attacks that are very high level logical test cases that basically say if you think your system might contain a bug like this, try this set of steps. And that's a, that's a, a reactive approach. You would take Whitaker's book and you'd go, okay, yeah, that, that sounds like something we could have in our system and, and I'll give it a try. Uh, basically, it's, it's uh, any, any form of testing that's more focused on, as I said, reacting to what you're you're actually given rather than trying to uh, uh, anticipate things. Um, not very good at preventing defects, of course, because you are reacting, but it's uh, very good at uh, finding blind spots in your analysis and your set of developed tests. So I always always recommend that as part of the uh, part of the process. Okay, I got a question from. Uh, I'm not able to read the name here. Let's, uh, Darlene, maybe. Um, do agile testers write automated tests or manual tests, and then convert some to automated regression tests? Um, it would be nice if you could automate all of your tests, uh, but that's that's really not not a realistic expectation. Um, some tests are inherently not automatable. If they require frequent human intervention to keep them running, or they require a human in the loop to determine success or failure of the test, then in these cases they are not really uh, practically automatable. And in some cases they, a test might be automatable, but the return on investment of automating it simply isn't there because you're not going to run it enough times to repay the effort that you put into doing that. So, you know, you think you have to in any any life cycle methodology, agile or or non-agile, um, have a way of determining whether a test can practically and uh, with with a reasonable return be automated. And uh, you know, that's uh, I think it's the same rules anywhere. Now, then the question is, you know, how do you do the automation? And, and this this depends a lot on what's required to make the um, to make the automation maintainable. Now, we certainly have some clients who automate beforehand, and uh, when I say beforehand, I mean before the original test execution for all the features and are able to do that. Typically, that's because they're automating through the uh, command line interface, and the command line is reasonably well specified, even if the, uh, the exact behaviors are not, uh, not necessarily specified. Um, I think at the graphical user interface, you're likely to find that you're going to need to have sort of a retroactive thing where you, you test manually, probably for the most part, on the new features, and then uh, automate the tests, the regression tests, uh, as a sort of a test closure activity after the sprint is over. Um, and this is probably going to require some kind of separate test automation team perhaps that is there sort of following along behind the manual testing parade, picking up the tests and automating them. And that then means that the tests, the manual tests have to be created in a way that they, uh, they are uh, automatable, that automation has been kept in mind. Okay, we got a question here. Again, I'm not, uh, not able to see the, uh, who asked the question. Sorry, it looks like it might be uh, Lynn, Lindsay. Um, it's a long question, so it's like a good one. We are refactoring our huge enterprise application and majorly in the user interface. The user interface automation becomes extremely challenging. What could be a good test strategy?